Good evening, and welcome to Newcastle After Dark. We are your hosts, The Management. Coming to you from the land of the Festival of Trees and the Feast of Seven Fishes, bringing you films that are a feast for the mind. Tonight's film is 1974's Black Christmas, starring Olivia Hussey. This has John Saxon, Keir Dulay, and Margot Kidder. And it is a creepy classic film as well as the daddy of most modern horror films. Yeah, it really is. Uh, especially um, slasher films, but not limited to slasher correct. films. Correct, correct. This film is not a gory film, or is it visceral? Uh-huh. It has a powerhouse cast and a good story. It does, yeah. And it's very creepy. It is. Uh, we're showing the UK version, yes. which is edited for content. Yes, uh, some language in the beginning, but otherwise the film is intact. Um, in the States, this was released as Silent Night, Evil Night. Right. But the actual original title is Black, Black Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. So with that, sit back, relax, and enjoy 1974's Black Christmas. Oh, by the way, how come I was the only one there working tonight? We were there this afternoon, Barb. A likely story. How's it look? Eulish, very Eulish. Have you got your Santa Claus suit ready? Yeah. What time the little bastards arrive? At one o'clock. Terrific. Hello? Pardon? Who? Bob, it's for you. Long distance. 
Oh, great. Hang on, I'll take it in the other room. party. No, I've had a couple. Oh, come on, I'm not drunk. No, no, um, I have some stuff to do in the afternoon, and then I was just going to get the, the 720 train into the city. Oh, come on, you got to be kidding. Why can't I come too? Well, who the hell is he? Good night. You're a real gold-plated whore, mother. See you next you know week. That? Okay. Hey, call before you come. I'm gonna have to get my parents used to. I'll something. just get a couple of my friends and we'll okay. go uh, skiing. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm on fine. I'll see you around. Back on. You wouldn't want to go skiing for a few days? Yeah, sure, Bob. My mother's taking a place up at Mont Holly's. Anyone else want to come? Yeah. Sounds like fun. Great. How about you, Claire? Uh, no thanks, Barb. I've made some other plans. Okay. Hello? 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 Hey, quiet! It's him again! The Mona! His act. Could that be one person? No, Claire, that's the Mormon Tabernacle Choir doing their annual obscene phone call. strikes again. Fastest tongue in the West. That was sick. I really don't think you should provoke somebody like that, Barb. Oh, listen, this guy's minor league in the city. I get two of those a day. Maybe. But you know, that town girl was raped a couple of weeks ago. Darling, you can't rape a townie. You really are too much, Barb. Oh, come on. This is a sorority house, not a convent. I'll see you later. I'm gonna go pack. Ugh. Come on, Claire. She didn't mean anything. No, really, Jess, it's okay. I have to finish packing anyway. 
as if you had enough trouble fitting in here without you getting at her all the time. Come on, I know a professional version when I see one. Hey, can I get a hand on here? Speaking of professional versions, here we have the Queen of Vaudeville, circa 1891. Oh, where's the bin? I've been shopping. You know, I think the stores must take tacky lessons this time of year. I never saw such a bunch of Mrs. Mack, come in the other room. We've got a surprise for you. Come on, girl. Where have you been? Mrs. Max has been looking all over for you. Oh, hello, puss. Hello. Go on now. Got some things to do. Let's see. Yes, you girls are just too good to me. Oh, nonsense, Mrs. Mack. Hello? Hello, it's Jess there, please. Yeah, wait a second, Peter. Jess, it's for you, it's him. Hello? Hi. How was the party? Oh, it was good. Too bad you couldn't make it. I've been, I've been practicing for four days straight. I'm really, really wiped out. Yes, I know. Jess, dear, you won't forget to put out the lights. But you've got to find some time. I've got to talk to you. You sound funny. What, what's the matter? 
Nothing's the matter. I just want to talk to you. Why don't you tell me now? Because I want to talk to you face to face. Jess, I haven't been to bed in three nights. I'm just not in the mood to be playing games. Look, Peter, we'll talk about it tomorrow, okay? Okay, I'll, I'll be in room 30 all day. All right. I'll see you around two. I didn't mean to sound short with you. I, I guess I'm just exhausted, okay? Yeah, it's okay. I love you. I know. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Well, good night. Jesus, I wouldn't wear this to have my liver. Oh, thank you. It's okay. I'm sorry. I should have been keeping a better watch on. I think so. Yeah, well, I said I was sorry. Excuse me. I hate to bother you. I can see that you're busy, but I wonder if you could help me. You see, I was supposed to meet my daughter here at one o'clock. It's, it's half past now, and she's still not here. Her name's Claire Harrison. Do you know her? Claire Harrison? Yeah, I think so. I know she lives in a sorority house. It's it's called um, uh, Pi uh, Kappa Sig. Oh, of course, yeah. Well, Kappa is our sister sorority. Yeah. Some of the girls are over here today, but I haven't seen Claire. Uh, the place isn't far. I'll tell you how to get there. Ho ho ho! Shit. Santa, please. Look, she's supposed to be going away with me for the weekend. God damn it. Well, we decided that we would go skiing for a few days, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've been looking forward to this for three weeks, bitch. Isn't Santa naughty? Ho, 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 fuck. I just don't know, Mr. Harrison. Her clothes are all packed and ready to go. I bet you'll find her over at the common room. They're having a party there today for underprivileged children. Yes, I know. I'm very disappointed in this atmosphere. I intend to do something about it. 
Who's this? Uh, uh, that's uh, a friend of Claire's, a very nice young man from the town, uh, Chris Hayden. I didn't send my daughter here to be drinking and picking up boys. Oh, Claire's a good girl, Mr. Harrison. I wouldn't want you to get the wrong idea about that. She is a good girl. I'm sure you'll find her at the fraternity house. As a matter of fact, I could show you the way. I, I have to go to a store near there, if you wouldn't mind giving me a lift. I know where it is, but I'll be glad to give you a ride. Uh, this is very kind of you, Mr. Harrison. I'll just get my bag. I didn't send my daughter here to be drinking and picking up boys. Tough shit. You're supposed to be responsible for the morals of every girl in this goddamn house. These broads have the leaning tower of Pisa if they can get up there. I do my best. I don't know what the bastards expect. Claude? Is that you, Claude Kins? Claude? Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Come on, Claude. Come say goodbye to Mommy. Is that you, Claude? Oh, Jesus, Claude. Look what you made me do. Come on, Claude. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Come on, Claude, I gotta go. Here, kitty. Oh, God damn it, Claude, you little prick. This is very kind of you, Mr. Harrison. Think nothing of it. That's fantastic. I don't want it. You don't want it? No. I want to have an abortion. You can't make a decision like that. You haven't even asked me. I wasn't even going to tell you. Jess. I want us to have a baby. Peter, I can't. Oh, Christ, Jess. Don't you ever consider anyone but yourself? I've thought this out very carefully, and I know what I'm going to do. Do you know how important this afternoon is to me? Yes, I do. Why don't you just get out of here? There's nothing to discuss, Peter. I think there is. I'm not going to change my mind. We'll see. Will you be there at 9 o'clock? Yes. Okay, I'll see you tonight. Yes, dear. Now, I'm sure there's nothing wrong. Yes. I've just been talking with a friend of hers. 
She's going to call around for me. Yeah, it's all right. Yes, well, if we don't have any luck, I'll go to the police. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I don't think we'll be home tonight. It's a bit late to head out now. I think the little bugger snockered, son of a bitch. Any yeah, sure? well, goodbye, dear. <laughs> you are, aren't you? Not again. Billy! Billy? Oh, I'm sorry, you have the wrong number. What your mother and I must know is... Where did you put the baby, Billy? You've got the wrong number. Where did you put Agnes, Billy? Billy? Look, I'm telling you, you have the wrong number. What your mother and I must know is... Billy! For a public servant, I think your attitude really sucks. Shut up. Now, Mr. Harris, if you're convinced your daughter is missing, you can fill out one of these forms. I don't know if it's any consolation, but 90% of the time, girls are reported missing from the college. They're at a cabin somewhere with a boyfriend. Thanks. But that's not much consolation. Oh, here, Mrs. Mack. Let me help. Thank you, dear. You know, we gotta get Mr. Reynolds to fix this door. I must have called that son of a bitch a hundred times about it. Oh, Mrs. Mack, there was another one of those calls just now. Oh, what there, dear? It was weird. Some woman screaming, then a man wailing. A Claire Harrison's father was here today. Oh, really? I'm sorry I didn't get well, you still might. Claire didn't meet him where she was supposed to. I, I thought she went over to the fraternity. Where is it? Those bottles don't drink their salt, for God's sake. Eureka. Excuse me. Could you give me the number at the sorority house? Please. Yeah, sure. It's, uh, fellatio 20880. What? Fellatio. It's a, it's a new exchange, F-E. It's a new one on me. How do you spell it? Capital F, E, little L. L A T I O. Thanks. Don't mention it. No, she went home. No, she didn't. No one knows where she is. Are you serious? I thought maybe she was with you, or at least you might have heard from her. No, not since last night. Well, her father came to pick her up at one o'clock today, and she didn't show. So he went down to the police station with Phil and Bob. What happened? They didn't take it seriously. Why? I don't know. I think they figured she was shot up somewhere.
she's out for Christmas holidays, but there was a bad practice over at the high school this afternoon, and, and Janice plays a clarinet. And uh, when she didn't come home, I, I phoned Melody Green. That's her best friend. And uh, they hadn't seen her all day. She's only 13 years old, Lieutenant, and my husband's a trucker. He's out on the road, and just, so I came over here. Yeah, well, is it really so unusual for her to be just a few hours late, Mrs. Gray? Oh, yes. She should have been home at noon. We were going to buy a present for her father. Nash, you stupid son of a bitch, you got a big goddamn mouth. What the hell are you talking about? Hi, Chris. How's your brother? Ken, I gotta talk to you. What's up? I want to know why nothing's being done about Claire Harrison being missing and why this sh idiot gets away with saying the things he does. You're a friend of Claire Harrison? Yeah, I've been taking her out. Oh, this is uh, Jess, Ken. She lives in the same sorority house as Claire. All right, come on in. Sergeant, bring me the file on the Harrison girl. And take care of this. I think we should try to eat something, Mr. Harrison. You know, starving yourself isn't going to help the situation at all. No, thank you very much, Mrs. McHenry, but I just have no appetite. I feel I should be doing something, but I don't know what. Well, why don't you just try to stop worrying? The best thing you can do is stay right here. I'm sure she'll call her show up soon. But you just knew what to do. Did you know? This is a very little known fact, but did you know that there's a certain species of turtle? There's a certain species of turtle that can screw for three days without stopping. You don't believe me, do you? Well, I mean, how could I make something like that up? Uh, Barb, dear. Uh, I, I, I... Uh... No, really, they just three days, 24 hours a day. <laughs> Can you believe that, three days? I'm lucky if I get three minutes. Do you know how I know this? Because I went down to the zoo and I watched them. It was very boring. Well, actually, um, I uh, didn't stay for the whole three days. I went over and I watched the zebras because they only take 30 seconds. <laughs> Premature ejaculation. You think it's my fault, don't you? Barb, stop it. Don't shit me. That's what you're all thinking. Why don't you just come right out and say it? You think that I drove her away. And if she's dead, you're gonna blame me. Barb, for God's sake. Well, that's what we're all thinking. Why doesn't someone just come right out and say it? Barb, dear, you've had too much to drink. Mr. Harrison... I don't give a shit about Mr. Harrison. I'm sick and tired of everyone in this house insinuating stuff and not coming out with what they mean. Barb, why don't you go upstairs and lie down for a while? Shut up. And you leave me alone. God damn you. You think it's my fault, don't you? You've been implying it all afternoon. Barb, you're drunk. Go to bed.
Yes. Where's Mr. Harrison? Uh, he, he's in the dining room. I'm sure Claire will be all right. I hope so. And I just want to tell you that uh, I'm going to go to my sister's for the holidays, so I might not be here when you get back. That's okay. Yeah. Look, just check in on Bob before you leave. Could you do that? Of course I will. And you bundle up. Yeah, we'll be all right, Mrs. Mack. Mrs. Quaid and Mr. Harrison have asked me to extend their thanks to you for coming out on this cold night to help. Now, Mrs. Quaid has told us that Janice most likely came through this park on her way home from school today. So the first thing we'll do is comb the park. When I tell you, I want you all to assemble on the south edge of the park with your assigned officer, and then we'll just walk through the park. Spread out evenly, don't bunch up. There'll be two sets of dogs leading the way. Just spread out and follow them. George and Carly, stay out on the flanks. The fumes will mess up the dogs, and don't go more than 10 miles an hour or you'll be no use to us. Now, if any of you find anything, I want you to send someone out immediately to report it to me. Is that clear? Are there any questions? Okay, let's go. But goodbye, leg, if you get away late. Lollies always love to pop. All right, I hear you. Claude? 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 
damn it, Claude, I'm gonna have you fixed. Welcome back. Well, here we have the beginnings of our film, and you may notice a lot of familiar faces. You know, Margot Kidder. Mm. She was in Amityville Horror. She was. She was in the Superman movie. She was. Uh, um, she was Lois Lane. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And as you watch this film, you will notice that this cast is well seasoned. It is. I mean, Keir Dulé yeah. was in 2001, A Space yeah. Odyssey. Danny Kubrick. Yes. Yeah. And. Uh, John Saxon? John Saxon. Oh, geez, I love John Saxon. Yes. You know, um, yes. End of the Dragon. He was in Joe Kidd. Um, he was in The Nightmare on Elm Street yes. as well, yeah. Tenebrae. Yeah. Uh, and that's just a few. Just a few, yes. Yeah. You have uh, Art Hindle. Uh, he was in uh, Porky's. He was in Invasion of the Body Snatchers. The Brood. The Brood, yeah. And the, the, the neat little fact is, is that that fur coat that he was wearing, it really was his coat. He still has it hanging up. He in was styling. <laughs> he was. Art was styling. He was styling. Yeah, he, you know, as soon as he comes on, you're like, I know him. Yes. You know, I know who that is. He's been in a, like 180 films. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. <laughs> and of course, Olivia Hussey. The fantastic Olivia Hussey. She was a Golden Globe winner prior to starring in this film. Yeah, uh, Romeo and Juliet. Yes. Yeah, 1968. Yes. And then she went on. Uh, after this, um, Jesus of Nazareth with Robert Powell. Yes, and she supposedly took this role because a psychic told her that she would do a film in Canada because this is a Canadian film mm -hmm. and that it would make a lot of money. Yeah. She also told her that she would marry Paul McCartney. Well, Paul missed out on that one, didn't he? Ooh, man, Paul <laughs> missed out. He did. Yeah, he did. Well, you know, she was considered by some, you know, to be uh, one of the most beautiful women in the world. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And the thing about this film is the characters are very well developed. As the story progresses, you become emotionally involved with these characters. Yeah. Unlike more modern horror films where the mm -hmm. characters may, might not be as fleshed out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, even though this is, you know, under the title of slasher film yes you know it's not um as slasher ish as they would become yes yeah and the one we were emotionally attached to is uh mrs mac <laughs> <laughs> right. she had booze in the toilet she had it in the cupboard in a book yeah she had it in the litter box <laughs> she had it everywhere yeah she did now her role was supposed to go for uh betty davis yes yeah but she's Turned it down. Yes. But how great would Betty Davis have been? Oh man. Well, Mary Waldman does a good job. She does do a good job. Yeah, she, really she does. does. She does. Yeah. And uh, you know, but we we liked her nipping on that John Brown there <laughs> every once in a while. She was. And like we said, it's a powerhouse cast. I mean, Absolutely. it really is. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It is. So let's get back to Black Christmas. Peter's coming around. 
started our leads already. It's cold. Yeah, I'll be coming home soon, too. I'm freezing. Can you see you? We'll let you know if anything happens. Yes, hello. Um, I've been getting obscene phone calls and I want to know what can be done about it. Yes, all right, I'll hold, but only for a moment. <gasps> Peter, Jesus, you scared the hell out of me. Why didn't you say something? Yeah? Well, you scared the hell out of me, too. What's all I yelling about? I was upstairs having a little sleep. I hope you don't mind, but it got a little cold out there waiting for you. I'm sorry I was late, Peter. Yeah. Claire Harrison is missing. I was out with a search party looking for her. Yes, hello? Oh, no, no. I want to report something. No, I don't want to hold. How did the recital go? How do you think it went? Peter, what kind of a game are you playing? I thought you wanted to talk, so why don't you quit attacking me and we'll try to have a rational adult conversation? Yes. Now stay on the line. Okay, now calm down, lady. Let's have the story. Oh, yeah? That's the address. Six Belmont Street. How many calls? Well, did you call the phone company? Oh, yeah? Well, miss, we're very busy here. There's been a child murdered in the park. I don't know when we can get a man on it. It's probably just one of your boyfriends playing a little joke. Yeah, well, I'll report it and try to get a man on it just as soon as possible. 
I'm sorry, miss. Jess, what's wrong? Little girl was found murdered in the park. What? A search party that was looking for Claire found a little girl murdered. Claire's still missing. Well, Claire's all right. Is she? Now, listen, Jess, I know you're upset. But I've got something to tell you. Mm. I'm leaving the conservatory. Peter. Now, you just hear me out. Will you hear me out, please? Now, I've lived in one room for eight years, and I'm tired of it. I'm tired of having to line up behind six people every time I want to take a bath. I've had it. I'm quitting the conservatory, and we're getting married. We'll say something. Do you remember when we first met? You told me about your wanting to be a concert pianist. How it was your greatest dream. And I told you about some of the things that I wanted to do. I still want to do those things. You can't ask me to drop everything I've been working for and give up all my ambitions because your plans have changed. Be realistic. I can't marry you. Sure you can. What does it change? We could be married. You could still do anything you wanted to do. Peter, I don't want to marry you. All right. What about the baby? I uh, didn't want to bother you with it, sir. Oh, you did. Six Belmont Street. That's where your daughter lives? Yes, it is. A high school girl's been murdered. Mr. Harrison's daughter is missing. And now at the house where she lives, the other girls are getting obscene phone calls. Don't you think we ought to look into it, Nash? Well, Lieutenant, I guess, uh, sure. Thank you, Lieutenant. Yeah, thanks, Ken. Sergeant Nash, could I speak to you for a minute? Yeah, sure, Lieutenant. <laughs> What's this? Well, that's the number at the sorority house. Collation? <laughs> yeah, it's a new exchange. F E. New exchange? <laughs> yeah, Felicia. One of the girls that was in this afternoon gave it to me. She gave it to you. Yeah. Nash, I don't think you could pick your nose without written instructions. <laughs> I know. Something dirty, ain't it? Selfish bitch. You're talking about killing our baby as though you were having a wart removed. Now can you see why I didn't want to tell you? What the hell are you trying to do to me? What are you doing to yourself?
Jess, let's get one thing straight. You are not going to abort that baby. Peter, you're not going to tell me what I can and cannot do. Jess, if you try getting an abortion... I think you better leave. If you try getting an I abortion... I said get out. You're going to be very sorry. Hi, Peter. I'll get Jess. Jess, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Any more news? No, but there's some people here to see about the phone calls. Jess, this is Lieutenant Fuller, and I'm sorry. Uh, Graham, Bill Graham. Are you the person who called the station today? Yes. I would like to put a tap on your phone, but we'll need your written permission to do that if it's okay with you. Okay. Okay, Graham, you can go ahead. And I'd like to see Claire Harrison's room. Here. Where's the telephone? Uh, there's one in the living room and one here in the hall. Claire's room's up here. How many girls live in this house? Uh, usually ten. This is lineman Graham at 6 Belmont. I'm working line 559-6114. Right. This afternoon, I got a call from a woman that I thought was the wrong number. But then she started screaming at me. Well, who was the last one here to see Miss Harrison? I think I was. When? Approximately. Last night, about 10.30. Just the way she left her room, as far as you know? Yes. What's this? We were having a party last night. She drink a lot? No, hardly at all. Do you have any emotional problems, anything like that? No, not clear. Who is she seeing besides Chris Hayden? No one. Sure that? So you were the last one to see her sometime this morning? Last night. Right, last night. Well, did anyone see her this morning? No, I didn't. And all the other girls have gone for the holidays. Can I get a list of their phone numbers where I can reach them? Sure. There's one in Mrs. Mack's room. Who's Mrs. Mack? She's the house mother. Right now? Uh, yes, another girl, Barbara College. She's upstairs asleep. Um, she's not feeling too well. Is she the one that was at the station today? Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll let her sleep. Okay. Were there any deliveries uh, yesterday? Or was anyone working in the house, anything like that? No, I don't think so. Mrs. Mack would know. Is her sister's number on this list? Yes. Graham, how's it going? You about finished? Yeah, what I've done is I've tapped this phone so that when it rings, it'll ring at the station house, too. At the same time, I'll be at the phone company checking on the location of the source of the call. Are there any other phones in the house? Uh, yes, the house mother has another Yeah, but it's room. another number and there haven't been any calls in it. You're going to have to keep this guy on the line as long as possible. we got a mechanical system here and it takes a while. I know it's not very pleasant, but... Uh, girls, can I show you something? See the car outside? Yeah. We've got one of our men in it, so you've got nothing to worry about. Yeah, sure. Hey, hey. How 
ask Chris. Oh, he's okay. You know, Chris. Oh. I'm sorry, Jess. I guess I'm just exhausted. I've been taking these pills for my cold and they knock me out. Will you be okay if I go up to bed? Yes, of course. Are you sure? Yes, go up and get some rest. Call me if there's any news. Yeah. Everything clear on your end, Jeff? Okay. Sure. Uh, yeah. Now, look, I'm gonna need about ten more minutes. Now, be sure you tell those people again, they gotta keep this guy on the line. Right. Because he hasn't worn his hat for the last two days. Yes, we certainly will live into that. Thank you very much. Jeez. Graham's nearly ready at the switching station. Now, when the phone rings at the house there, this one will ring too. But the transmitters have been removed, so uh, we won't pick anything up at all from this end. Great, thanks. Lieutenant, the men are here from Scarborough. Okay.
Jean, get the children in the car. Oh, what's going on? Please, just get them into the car. Okay, kids. Let's go. Come along, children. Hurry. Miss? Miss? Thank you. Merry Christmas. There was a little girl murdered over in the park tonight. Yes, I heard. Your phone's ringing. 44, cruiser 354. Oh, yes. Excuse me. Good night. Certainly. Good night. Testing. Bill Graham. Trace call coming in on from 9. Hello? Did you recognize her name? No. I guess it was just kind of getting to me. Uh, when he called before, did he use more than one voice like this? Yes, yes, he did. He used several different voices. Jim, I'm going to ask you tonight, uh, who was the guy that was leaving when I arrived at your house? My boyfriend, Peter. Were you having a fight? But Jess, I'll have to call you back in a little while. Are you all right? I'll call you back in a little while and we'll go we'll get him next time. Bernie, yeah, call it up. I'm not letting no son of a bitch trespass on my land in the middle of the night. I don't care what kind of what uniform the hell is going on here. Yeah. fired on a police officer. You're goddamn right. I do it again, too. The bastard who trespassing. Hogan got an ass full of bird shot. Yeah, and I'm going to make some bitch pick every one of them out with his teeth. The next time, you're going to get the gun up your ass. Sideways. If you laugh, you can, and I'll bust you to Boy Scout, I swear. I'm telling you. If you think it was Peter, then why didn't you just tell the police? Well, because I'm not really sure. Well, they should be stopped. Whoever it is should be stopped. God, Jess, I haven't had a minute's sleep around here. There's been so much noise in the house. What the hell was all that yelling about? Mom had an asthma attack. She was having a nightmare. Is she all right? Yeah, she's fine. She's sleeping now. He repeated almost word for word what Peter said to me tonight. Couldn't it just be a coincidence? Oh, God, Phil, I don't know. I'm so confused. Oh, look, Jess, I really don't think it could be Peter. You know, I don't like Peter much, but I don't think he's that sick. I can't believe Peter would do this. He's so gentle most of the time. Oh, God, Phil, you know, I'm really getting scared. Look, are you sure that cop's still out there? Yeah, he's there. Yes. Oh, God, please help me. 
Oh, look, Peter, don't cry. We can straighten things out. There's nothing to get so upset about. Yeah? It's Bill Graham. You want me to trace that one? Yeah, I'll try and get it. Right. Jess, we can't kill Davy. Please, Jess, we can't, can't kill the baby. Peter, where are you? Please, Jess. You know how I feel about the baby. Don't do this. Jess, don't hurt the baby. Stop this, Peter. You want a baby. I, I know you do. I, I don't want to hurt the baby. Peter, please tell me where you are. I'm sorry. Yeah, the calls just aren't long enough. Right. Yes. Jess, Lieutenant Fuller, you want to tell me what that's all about? You listen to that? Yes. What did he mean about killing the baby? Jess, it's important that you tell me. I'm pregnant. I told him I didn't want to have the baby. Well, when did you tell him this? Just today, you're sure? Yes. We can't kill the baby. That's a strange way of putting it. Peter's an artist. He's very high strung. Neurotic, maybe? No. No more than a lot of people. Jess, are you telling me the truth? I've got a feeling you're holding something back from me. Now, I don't want it to be Peter, but if it is, he needs help. Do you know what I mean? The sooner the better. Now look, think back. Was Peter with you any of the times that you got one of these calls? Yes. Yes, he was here. He was at the house tonight when the first call came. That's right, it couldn't be Peter. Phil, it couldn't be Peter, he was here. Well, he's obviously upset about something. I'd like to talk to him. Can you tell me where I might reach him? Uh, well, he lives at Baker House, uh, but when he gets like this, he usually goes down to the recital hall at the music conservatory and plays. Now look, Jess, if you get any more calls, you're gonna have to keep him on the line longer. You're not giving us enough time to get a trace. I'm trying. You know, it really upsets me. Yeah. Right, of course. Look, you're doing fine. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Thank God. I knew it couldn't have been Peter. Well, what can I tell you? Covered the entire campus area. We're working our way toward the lake now. Where do we go from there? Start them out on the south end of town and have them work their way through town on a house to house. Yes, we heard. Well, we're just helping the police to look for the killer. Yeah. Well, 
Well, we'd ask you in, you know. <laughs> but our dog died last night. Oh, well, uh, well, well we don't want to bother you at a time like that. Uh, we were just wondering if you noticed anything suspicious here tonight. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, well, uh, you just keep your doors and windows locked, and, uh, and you'll be safe. Okay. You understand? Thanks, yeah. so yeah. we will. And remember, there might be others from the search party around, so yeah. uh, don't be afraid. We'll be around oh, to see okay, that you're safe. Good enough. Thank okay, you very much. Just remember to lock those doors and windows yes, out, eh? Okay. Okay, yes. then. Bye, Good night, now. <laughs> I'd rather face the killer. <laughs> no, seriously, do you realize this is the only door and window in this whole house that's locked? Dash. Get the dean of admissions on the phone. Tell him I want all records on a Peter Smythe, music student. Then have a car meet me out front. Are you there? Phil! Hello? Terminal 55.
For Christ's sakes, Nash, you got it wrong. That's where the calls are going into. That's where they're coming from, too, sir. through to Jennings. I want you to call that girl. Nash, be calm. Don't tell her that the guy's in the house. Just tell her to put down the phone and walk straight out the front door. I'll be there in five minutes. Nash, if you blow this, I'll kill you. Phil? Phil, where are you? Please answer me. Sergeant Nash, are you the only one in the house? No. Phil and Bob are upstairs asleep. Why? All right. Now, I want you to do exactly what I tell you without asking any questions, okay? No, no questions. Now, just put the phone back on the hook, walk to the front door, and leave the house. What's wrong? Please, Miss Bradford, please just do as I tell you. Okay. I I'll get Phil and Bob. No, no, no! Don't do that, Jess! Jess! The caller is in the house. The calls are coming from the house. Jess! Jess! Get up! And don't go up there! Miss Bradford? Miss Bradford? Phil! Bob! Oh, please answer me! Phil!
Jess, are you all right? Jess? Jess, are you in there? Jess, are you in there? Jess? Jess, is that you? Jess? Why didn't you answer me? What was all the yelling about? Jess, you had me worried. What are you doing down here? start killing people. I don't know. He must have made a call after... after each murder. It's hard to believe Jess would kill anybody, much less Peter. Well, she's under. How long do you think it'll be before I can talk to you? Just a couple questions. Well, she'll be out for at least four hours and pretty groggy after that. What time do her parents get here? A couple of hours. They're driving down from Unionville. I'll stay with her till then. 
condition she's in, I wouldn't count on talking to her before tomorrow afternoon if I were you. Does anybody notify Patrick Cornell? Who? What? Uh, Phil's boyfriend. It's okay, I'll do it. Uh, Lieutenant, I think we're going to have to take these bodies to the morgue in the Lincolnville. The hospital doesn't have facilities to handle this many at one time. All right, tell the coroner they had to get started on the autopsies right away. Then notify the parents for identification. Yes, sir. Uh, I think that about wraps everything up here, sir. Uh, state lab guys will be here in about an hour. They uh, said. Reporters, sir, and television news guys, they want pictures. Get them out of here. Tell them I'll meet them down at the station. All right, guys, come on. Come Bradford Joe being charged. I'm going to pick you up. Right. All right, you guys. Come hey, on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Yes, the girl's father's upstairs, but he can't tell you. Would you keep it down, please? We've got a sick girl in here. Look, I'm level. I don't know the whole story, but I'm sure. Not here. Let's go to the station. Come on, get out. Come on, move. 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 All right, Lieutenant, will do. Hey, Lieutenant. Hey, you. Come on, out, out. You want to spend the night in the can? Boom. Jesus, what's the matter with this guy? He's suffering from shock. We have to get him to the hospital. Can you get us a car, Nash? Yeah, yeah, let's go. All right, McCloskey, you heard what the Lieutenant said. Bye. It's me, Billy.
Well, we've reached the conclusion of Black Christmas. And you may be wondering where this story comes from. Well, supposedly, this was based on murders that took place in Canada. Yeah. I, I mean... With very Montreal, lo- yeah. Very loosely based upon it. Right. As the story goes. As the story goes. Yes. We don't know how true that is. Right. But it's based upon... Right. The idea was based upon... Yes. Yeah, murders that had happened. Yes. Yes. So, we have to touch upon Bob Clark. Oh, absolutely. Because absolutely. Bob Clark started off in horror films. He did Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. Yeah. And this one. And then he kind of moved on. He, he did. He did Moon Runners, which <laughs> ended up inspiring the TV show Dukes of Hazard. Right. And he directed A Christmas Story. And we mean the movie A Christmas Story, Ralphie. Right? Uh, with their Red Ryder BB gun. Yeah. It's a classic. I mean, they run it for 24 hours. Yes. Uh, on Christmas Eve. Yes. Yeah. And to go from genre to genre and have success. He also did Porky's. That's right. I mean, he did Porky, which is, I love Porky's. Oh. Right? But you're right. To go from um, doing horror into comedy and being successful at it and doing it well. Yes. I mean, that's unheard of. I mean, that's, really. That's talent. It is talent. It is. You know. And the thing about Bob Clark was Bob Clark would do the Comic-Cons and he would always invite cast members from Black Christmas. And Olivia Hussey usually didn't, you know, participate because she had a social anxiety. She just didn't wow. like being out and being around crowds. And, and in 2006, when the remake, which Bob Clark approved, came out, she did the Comic-Con with him. And three months later, him and his son were killed in a Unfortunately. car. Yes, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. So, even though he approved the 2006 remake, which added to the story, right? The true remake, the true sequel, never came to. Never play. happened. No. And um, um, Andrea Martin was the only one from the original film to be in that 2006 remake. Yes. I guess there was another one in 2019. Which I knew absolutely nothing about. Yeah, we didn't see it. No, so. But also, you can see the inspiration that this provided for future films. Oh, absolutely. You know, in my opinion, you know, especially when a stranger calls. Oh, completely. Right? I mean, you know, the calls coming from inside the house. Yes, this was the first time that that was done in a film. Right. Now, younger folks with cell phones, of course, don't seem to understand or get that point of a landline. Yeah. That's. Yeah. That was crazy. Oh, I mean, you know, it had to frighten, you know, every young girl babysitting, you know, back in, well, especially from, you know, uh, from when a stranger calls back in 1979. Yes. So even if you, you know, um, you hadn't seen this and you just saw that, I mean, uh, that was completely frightening. Yes. Completely. And to add to that, you know, Bob Clark had a conversation with John Carpenter and John Carpenter said, man... Are you going to do a sequel to Black Christmas? And he said, well, you know, I've thought about it. And, you know, I'd have the killer in Asylum and he would break out on Halloween. Mm -hmm. And later on, when John Carpenter would do the movie Halloween, everybody asked Bob Clark if he felt that he was owed some credit. Sure. And he said, no, we were just having a conversation. Exactly. You know, that's all John Carpenter. Oh, most definitely. But boy, did that that really made it for babysitters, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you ain't kidding. You no. Know? No. You know, and this is the first of the holiday horror films. Yes. Right? Yes, it is. I mean, you would think, well, there had, had been something yes. before this. Yes. This is the first. I mean, because there'd be so many that would uh, follow out. I mean, you know, Friday the 13th. Yes. You know, um, April Fool's April Day. April Fool's Day. Um, My Bloody Valentine. Right, exactly. I mean, you know, so many of them. Yes. So many. But this is the first. Yes, it is. Yeah. And, you know, legend has it that Elvis Presley loved this movie. The King. The King, baby. The King, right? TCB. He was eating them peanut butter banana sandwiches. <laughs> hey, if it's good enough for Elvis, it's good enough for me. That's right. I'll tell you that. That's because right. Because I guess, you know, he watched it. Um, every Christmas up till his death, which was about three, three years. years you know? right, right. But still, you know, I and, love that. And, you know, the thing that uh, also stood out to us was when Keir Dulé 
takes the microphone stand and smashes that piano. Yeah. They weren't cheap back that then either. That was not cheap. I mean, you know, even if they got, you know, an old broken down, kind of inexpensive, uh, you know. Yes. I, I mean, that's some, that's some serious damage. Yes. You know, it is. And the interesting thing was, is when they had an interview with Keir Delay, they asked him, were, were they trying to make a point with this movie about her being pregnant, mm. just being pregnant, and not having the baby? He was like, no. There was no point being made. Right. It was just part of the story. Right. And that was, you know, pretty shocking for yeah. the time. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, and the music is Carl Z- uh, Zitter. Right? Yes, Carl Zitter. Now, you know, even though there's not a whole lot of, you know, actual music, um, you know, outside of the, you know, carolers, and, yes. you know, a little bit here and there, um, it was very avant-garde. Yes. You know, I mean, he would use, you know, combs and forks knives and things and he would run them across the strings of the piano to get those unsettling tones which I think works wonderful in this movie it does absolutely but speaking of unsettling tones you know we don't like Christmas caroling Uh, no (laughs) (laughs) no we don't come out for that no my house or his house it just ain't happening not that we're Scrooge or anything no but it's it's a little it's a little little, unsettling it's a little off (laughs) it is (laughs) yeah But we hope you enjoyed Black Christmas. Definitely. And we thank you for being here with us at Newcastle After Dark. We hope you join us again for the Lost Treasure in Cinema. And until next time, Merry Merry Christmas. Christmas.